Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Alhamdulillah, uh, we are still discussing about uh, the treatment option and protocol and technique for depression and today I'm going to tell you about what are the treatment expectations. Eh? So as within CBT as well as PICBT, Positive Islamic Cognitive Behaviour Therapy, we have the methodology in which you can uh, follow. Okay, it is in this book. All right, it's in this our book here to give you some guideline of how to go about with it. Naturally, you have to have a coach to give you a detailed explanation of the technique. Eh? So, if we go into what I can expect from my treatment, there are many techniques used in CBT. By CBT, some are used for treatment sessions, some for homework assignments, and some for both. Most are aimed at modifying negative or anxiety-provoking thoughts. Some of the techniques are as follows. So one is examining the evidence for and against a negative thought. Eh? So we have this as a way of training our client or our uh, uh, patient how to examine this eh? because they have this. In cases patient feeling disliked by his boss, the technique may involve asking questions. For example, a patient comes in, he, he's depressed because of the nature of his work, with his, his relationship with the boss. What was that evidence that I'm disliked by my boss? So you can ask that kind of question. Was there another interpretation for that evidence? Was there any evidence that I've done a bad job in my work? Was there anything wrong about feeling anxious in my situation? Or wasn't it just a natural reaction? It's just a normal reaction because somebody is high up in your the hierarchy. Uh, you you feel a feel a fear. So, examining the evidence for and against the negative thoughts is one of the technique that you can slowly infuse into the uh, psyche of uh, your your client, so that he or she can then uh, be more at home with understanding that. Their negative thoughts and their automatic thoughts based on the current situation is uh, not viable But it must be done in such a way that it is gentle and it is graded Because you cannot jump and say, hey, the way you think like that, that is nonsense You know, you cannot do that And that, that is not the way eh? So this is where uh, you learn the technique eh, of how to actually bring the person into This idea of getting out of their negative thoughts by a gradation exercise number two reality testing so you also have to infuse in your client the idea that their sense of reality is distorted and that's why they have this problem of depression or whatever that is related to this situation for example the therapist may encourage the patient to test the validity of his negative thoughts by creating a reality chart which involves the following stages uh, that means you can make a chart identifying the notion Hypothesis and rating in terms of belief uh, Does he really believe in it on a scale of 1 to say 10? Okay, so you you whatever that that person is saying about their Fear their worry their depression. You just can list it out Okay, and then from there you can figure out how you can solve the problem. All right So working out what it could be predict at the end of the relationship What is the situation that you can want the outcome that you want? And reevaluating his method of data collection as well as relating his original belief. So you go back to the client original belief and how you can shift it from depression to just mere sadness and then to normal normalcy. Yeah? The patient might also be given homework whereby he needs to collect evidence to test his or her fear or hypothesis. Most importantly, he needs to assess if there is any other real evidence that might point towards his negative thoughts. So what are the other evidence? Because the likelihood of that situation actually coming to being is only very, very small. Maybe in, uh, in out of 100, maybe only 2% of the situation we have explained in the various video. Huh? In case where the per person's negative thoughts are justified and when other people's behavior is not so easily modifiable, another strategy would be needed. And this could be the basis of more traditional counseling. So if certain of your approach doesn't work, you have to go on to the next approach. Huh? So, number three is success therapy and graded assignment. This is very important because as you get a person who is depressed, he or she will be very lethargic. Uh, they are not willing to do anything. 
uh, they feel that this is the end of the world or you know they feel that you know it's no hope and so on so as lack of energy in depre depressive illness can often lead to inactivity success therapy is designed to encourage routine activities such as going to work cooking going for a walk shopping playing a game or watching tv in this technique therapists and patients will agree targets for the week graded according to how long each one may take and how hard it is so you give them certain tasks uh, say walking okay walk, walk start with 10 minutes a day uh, in the neighborhood maybe then later on grade it to 15 20 then you get the 30 minutes nice walking along the uh, pathway or in the park or something like that that is where you grade them up uh, so that you get out of the house all right an initial cooking target may be something basic like boiling an egg or toasting a piece of bread new targets are set as you achieve success so first you teach them for example if they are preparing their own breakfast it's just a matter of frying an egg or cooking an egg so that could be a task you write down for them to do all right a new target is set as you achieve success a therapist will probably challenge a patient who says i can't do it lah. i'm so tired i'm so fed up everything so this is where encouragement in terms of having the sense of the inner quest huh, is very important that's why it's in islam you must always have hope hope in your life hope in your relationship most importantly hope in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is where the islamic counseling aspect can come in huh? but as i say you must do it gently so that that person who receives this input from the islamic perspective who may not be practicing islam in in, in its its uh, normalcy will find quite uh, intruding uh, for them it is as if you are intruding into their life and give um, expecting them to do something that they would not want to do or they feel that it is not uh, their way of solving their problem so this is where you got to be very careful when you bring the islamic element uh, i have given you some ideas in the previous video you try to bring it in such a way it's bringing from the perspective of what hubbullah the love of allah to us always bring back because people who are desperate people who are depressed they always need love so the love must come from where at the highest level hubullah the love from allah and then maybe as i mentioned earlier on the zikr seeking forgiveness from allah uh, using asmal husna uh, ya ya allah ya ghafur ya wadu ya allah ya ghafur ya wadu so you you can tell them instead of telling them hey, you must pray five times a day you must go wake, wake up in the night do tahajjud and so on that will be too too far off because this person uh, is so disconnected but if you tell him about the love of allah the mercy of allah the forgiveness of allah in you giving them an idea that this is something uh, that is good for them and it is a way in which you can build relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with it too much of a problem so you can teach them this as i said this zikr asma al husna ya allah Ya Ghafur, Ya Wadud, Ya Allah, Ya Ghafur. So each time they have these negative thoughts or this depression, you can tell them, okay, just remember this little phrase. Uh, ya Allah is Allah, the Almighty. Ya Ghafur, most forgiving. Ya Wadud, the most loving. So they remember the mercy, the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and slowly will get them out of the depressive state. Huh? Number four is activity scheduling. All right. So you must, in your approach towards the protocol or the technique, you must have activities scheduling a person who is depressed usually stop engaging in activities as a result their mood get worse so they get they go through the negative uh, the vicious cycle not the uh, not the virtual cycle of going better and better but getting worse and worse more and more and more depressed eh? activity scheduling seeks, seeks to reverse that process and enable you to lock your progress over a period of days weeks months and so on looking over your progress in a written form can be surprising, surprisingly encouraging so you know uh, before that you don't even cook your breakfast or fry an egg uh, you don't even eat your breakfast now you're regularly eating breakfast so you can see that that before that you don't even walk for 10 minutes now you're walking 30 minutes a day so from there you can build up uh, the necessary impact in terms of activity and try to bring this activity at the four levels uh, s-e-m-p spiritual emotional mental and physical uh, i'll give you the chart later on where you can develop an activity scheduling of s EMP uh, as one of the techniques which I will give you later. Huh? All right. So the theory behind the concept is that all we need is to feel good about ourselves, and we need to have this feeling reinforced. Huh? For example, by compliment, uh, by uh, mastery over some of the activities that we need, or by, for example, for people who are facing an examination, by passing the examination, or at least get a better grade, and so on. Huh? 
So they also need to feel pleasurable in life. Uh, this word pleasurable is something that we have to encourage them uh, in terms of relationship with their family, with their friends. Uh, so because the more isolated we are, the more depressed we become. So try to get into activities that is useful for them. For example, if they love sports, uh, get back to their friends who are playing futsal, for example. All right, or get back to their friends who are involved in, for example, in basketball or badminton or whatever it is. You know, so you go out and then meet and talk, and even simple thing like uh, meeting your friends in the restaurant in the night, chit chatting over a cup of tea or coffee. It is very useful, especially when that become a routine. Then you can get the positive vibes from your relationship, the laughing and the joking that you you have with your friends. Eh? And number five is keeping a diary. So it is important. This helps to lock thoughts, feelings and that involve and you can do this what we call thought catching. Eh? Whatever negative thought you monitor your feelings and catch the accompanying thoughts and record them in a thought diary. This may pinpoint to critical difference between absolute negative thoughts and rational response to a particular event. All right? And slowly as you become their coach or their therapist, you can see uh, from the diary how this person is progressing and then can give them the necessary compliment, compliments and how they can achieve a better understanding of what expectation they have in terms of uh, treating their depression. So this integrated approach, I hope, will give you some idea that it is structured. Uh, CBT is structured, positive Islamic cognitive behavior therapy is also structured and the structure is what we do as one, examining the evidence for, for and against a negative thoughts, two, the approach to reality testing, number three, uh, the success therapy graded tasks and assignments. Number four, what you need to do in terms of activities, scheduling. And number five, keeping a diary and journaling, which I have explained in the previous video. You can go back to the journaling aspect where I link it together with ISDT, Inner Speech Dialogue Technique, which is very particular to our positive Islamic cognitive behavior therapy. So, inshallah, if you have these necessary tools, inshallah, you can begin to help your friends, or your client who have who are having depression inshallah and you feel that you can do something but always remember when we are doing these things we are the caliph we are the servant of allah the caliph of allah for our own very good we always strive to make ourselves good help others to be good and make this world good and inshallah get as many friends as possible to log in into our youtube islamic psychology pip so that we can share this knowledge even for those who are not interested in psychology but to get some motivation of how to go about their life in a normal, happy, wonderful way of life, inshallah.